Friday Fitness on a Monday. And I just woke up, so I'm very low energy. And I'm gonna do that dipshit thing that YouTubers do where they do their greeting. There's a quick edit, and they take a sip of their beverage, and then there's another edit. I fucking hate that. What I wanna talk about today, and what I put in the title of the video, is, I can't, I need my notes, uh, overdeveloped trapezius. Okay, so I want to dive right in so that I don't waste a bunch of time and anyone who watches the video doesn't click past the beginning. Uh, here's where this idea came from. So, I've been thinking, when, like when I see myself in the mirror, uh, I've been thinking my traps just look overdeveloped. They, they, they're they're disproportionate to, to my shoulders and my upper chest and everything. It, I'm wearing a hoodie right now, this is a bad, uh, <laughs> bad way to demonstrate it. But also I did a workout today meant to uh, ignore my traps and hit everything else so they don't look swole right now regardless. But they do look, like in my day-to-day -day life, in my day-to-day -day life they do look uh, overdeveloped to the point where it was bugging me because it contributes to this sort of meathead look. It's very literally a meatheaded look. Uh, and now here's where this train of thought really starts though, is I was watching this Renaissance periodization video and Dr. Mike has a throwaway comment talking about you know people worrying too much about their exercise choices. It was like, if you're the one in 5,000 person out there who worries that your traps are overdeveloped, like I guess good for you, blah, 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 and I commented, like, I am that one in 5,000 person, I think my traps are overdeveloped, and someone liked and commented on my comment, so I know that there are two of us out there, and then, by coincidence, yesterday, so this is over, like, the course of one week or something, yesterday, I was looking up some other information, but I came across someone writing about why Steve Reeves was their fitness hero, uh, and they happened to mention that Steve Reeves deliberately underworked his traps because he didn't want to have overdeveloped traps. He was really focused on his shoulders and having big traps makes your shoulders look a bit smaller. And I thought, okay, like there's something here. There's something here worth talking about. So I did some, so that's where, that's point one. That's where all these thoughts came from. That yes, there is a need for uh, how not to overdevelop your traps. And so, Checking my notes. Yeah, if you want to not overdevelop your traps, there's some things that you should do. I know I'm terrible at filming and I'm not gonna cut away or try and get any B footage for this because I just don't have the camera skills. So you're gonna work with me or you're gonna leave and that's fine, that's your problem, that's your prerogative. The thing about our traps is they kind of get a lot of accidental work all the time anyways. We're always leaned a bit forward, our heads weigh 20 pounds, and we're just always putting pressure on the back of the neck there. People's upper backs always hurts, people's traps are always need a massage. So this could benefit anyone even if you're not worried that your traps are overdeveloped and giving you a meathead look when you want more of a classic physique. First thing you're gonna do is is like establish a different mind muscle connection. So I before my workouts now, uh, I'll do just some no weight front raises, but really thinking about my shoulder blades going back and down, like as if my shoulder blades, my the wings are gonna meet in the small of my back, and think about your shoulder not being the point of lever, right? You don't want to think that you're moving from here and here up. You want to think, imagine there's much more of a counterweight back here and really feel your, your scapula going back and down and your shoulder staying far from your ear. And that is going to come in to every single thing that I say from now on. You want to have this long neck. That is how you're going to keep your traps out of it. And now, Coincidentally, again, I've said that word three times now, uh, Jeff Cavalier was talking about push-ups a little while ago, and he made this great point about how we accidentally take the pressure off of our chests when we're doing push-ups, when we get to the bottom and we squeeze our shoulder blades. 
He said not to do that because you're taking the pressure off your chest and your chest is what you want to be working on. And so the method he was showing in that was doing some good work about like not putting pressure on your back and your traps, keeping a long neck, keeping your ears away from your shoulders, even at the bottom of a push-up and trying to keep your, um, your back open when you're at the bottom of a push-up. And so if you can keep that in mind, you will not add any additional uh, pressure to your traps. And then, like the real test is taking that over to a dip. So the thing with dips is, I will try and move into position so you can see something here. Uh, it's really easy when you're doing dips to think of yourself as, as doing a shrug and then dropping and then up extending your triceps and then undoing the shrug, you gotta break that habit. You, you can't think of it as a shrug. You gotta keep your neck long the whole time. Because uh, there's no need to be working your traps for doing dips. Like your traps are gonna get work from every little thing anyways. You just don't want them to get too much work. So yeah, and I, I did this this morning. Keeping the focus on, on a long neck and a relaxed traps uh, is, really tough and strange during dips, but it can be done and you will just feel it more in your shoulders than before. Because your delts in your shoulders can steal work from each other. Um, and if you're trying to develop your shoulders, your traps can be getting in the way and vice versa. If you're trying to develop your traps, you need to make sure that it's your traps doing the work. And now the big exercise that I want you to think about is uh, okay. two things that one might add, because those were just comments on how I would do, how I am doing typical exercises differently now. So here's one thing that I added a while ago before I thought about taking my traps out of it, was I started doing neck raises again where I'm laying off the edge of the bench and doing the dick suck in motion. Because <laughs> Your, your traps can't work during that, right? It's your sternomastoid doing all of that work. Your traps will relax the same way your tricep relaxes during a bicep curl. These muscles will all relax if you're fighting resistance this way. And so trying to build up these muscles inadvertently also relaxes these muscles and might just, I think, create more of a visual balance. Uh, but then too. Like the big switch that I'm doing now is I'm switching to lying lateral raises instead of doing just a traditional lateral raise, which if you want to keep doing, if you want to do it bilaterally and standing, just don't go pat, like even up to here. Just do partial reps, keep it down here and keep your scapula retracted. But if you lay down on your side and do lateral raises, your traps just really can't get involved because you're not, there's no need to shrug like this or anything. So yeah, switching to the lying lateral raises, which are much, much harder if you've ever actually tried them. Um, yeah, you cannot move much weight because the much smaller muscles, like the supraspinatus, have to get involved if you're doing a lying lateral raise. So yeah, that's, so. Uh, front raises as a warm up. <laughs> I'm awful at this. Front raises as a warm up. So you get that mind-muscle connection that your, your traps are relaxed and your scapula is meeting at the center of your back. Do your push-ups with a long neck. Do your dips without a shrug. Uh, work your sternomastoid uh, and thicken the rest of your neck so that these, this doesn't sound seem too bulky in comparison. Uh, and switch to lying lateral raises. And you might be able to avoid looking like a meathead. Party Fitness.